Would you please rise? Welcome in the name of Jesus, the Savior of the world. We are gathered to worship, to proclaim Christ crucified and risen, and to remember before God our sister Doris, to give thanks for her life, to commend her to our merciful Redeemer, and to comfort one another in our grief. If you are watching us online, we invite you to go to trinityvoiceful.com for a bulletin of this service. This time I invite you to please stand. We begin in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. The Lord be with you. And, and also, also with, with you. you. Let us pray. O God of grace and glory, we remember before you today our sister Doris. We thank you for giving her to us to know and to love as a companion in our pilgrimage on earth. In your boundless compassion, console us who mourn. Give us faith to see that death has been swallowed up in the victory of our Lord Jesus Christ, so that we may live in confidence and hope, until by your call we are gathered to our heavenly home in the company of all your saints. Through Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. Amen. At this time, I invite you to please be seated for our sharing of memories. And um, I did not ask them who was going to go first, second, or third. Yeah. Um, Ruth, are you going to go first? I think that's perfectly great. I wanted to go ladies first, but I wanted to make sure you were okay with that. So we'll, we're having to begin with uh, memories from Ruth. Because our friends taught us this, and we tried 
to teach all of you this, and we want you to have learned this. This is my hope and my prayer. So I wrote, you taught us to love sacrificially and unconditionally. You kissed our eyes and read us stories. You taught us songs and rhymes while you were teaching us to love others and to love life. You taught us to work together and find pleasure in it. We had long talks while we were working in the barn and washing the cows and changing the straps and throwing down hay and silage. We worked in the fields, driving the tractor, picking rocks and pulling mustard and baling hay. We planted gardens and we picked apples and berries and we sang together while we washed the dishes or the jars for candy and while we picked the pickles to earn money for our school clothes, but there was no singing allowed at the table. We made wood and piled it up for the winter and we learned how to cook and sew and build and paint and plant and care for our animals and for our land. You taught us to volunteer and be active in the community. We learned this by watching you as you founded the 4-H hub in Connorsville and you nurtured it till it grew to 40 members and there's still like 50 members in it today and 60 years later. You always helped out the neighbors. You took care of their kids with no payment expected. You taught Sunday school, Bible school, and volunteered for the farmer union and you always taught, taught us to vote. You taught us to love music and drawing and drama. You, you dragged us to piano lessons for years, and we learned to play the trombone, the clarinet, the oboe, the flute, the bassoon, the drums, and other instruments too. And when Sharon became the church organist at age 11, you made us all practice by having church in our front room with, with the family as the congregation. And the little Dougie was the preacher. He would get up there and he'd go, Amen. And then Sharon would have to play whatever came the sermon because we were practicing for her to play for church. Uh, you taught us and supported us as the Hurdle Trio, as Joanne and Sharon and I sang at many events around the area. You served as our agent and our chauffeur. You made it possible for us to have 4-H programs in the town hall. And she, <laughs> my mother, she directed us in all these plays and all the neighborhood kids. And we would fill up the town hall. People would come from miles to see our programs. You taught us to be, you taught us devotion and commitment. You sat at our bedtime through appendicitis, chicken pox, measles, and concussions. And when we, when Lupe needed eye surgery, we had little money, but you found a way. Sharon had stomach problems as an infant, and Joanne broke her arm. And Dougie, when Dougie was three, he had kidney disease. And his doctor said there was nothing more that could be done to save his life, but you didn't give up. You insisted that he be referred to the Mayo Clinic and so he was there, and so he's here with us today. Shortly after your nephew Steve needed a home, when his mother, Ann, died following a long fight with cancer. She was only 25 when she died, and Steve was only three. So he came to live with us. He became our brother. And when, when your little granddaughter, Janine, drowned at 18 months, you were a tremendous support for Joanne and John and the rest of the family. You taught us to value family and tradition. Well, let me just point out that when, years later when Mackenzie died, they were there. She was there at the trial every day uh, for the murder uh, of Mackenzie. You taught us to value family and tradition. We learned about that as we cut our Christmas tree and brought it home on the sled. And then we baked and frosted the cookies and made Norwegian dishes, including Luke Fisk and Lapta. Santa came and he brought us a mound of presents, but we couldn't think of opening them until we had performed the family Christmas program <laughs> that we did at practice. You taught us about our roots. You taught, you taught us to have fun when you took us swimming in a gravel pit, fishing and water skiing, and took us to the North Shore. The chicken coop became a playhouse we dressed up the cats and we made mud pies and that you said were truly delicious. We dressed up the cats in dresses and uh, baptized them and we sang, holy, 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 we like macaroni. We <laughs> <laughs> didn't know the words. Uh, anyway, we did all that stuff. Um, you taught us to ski and we could skate and made a tent out of canvas and 
We had a, a boss named George Goble and a crow and cats and dogs and talking pigeons and <laughs> train, everything. And uh, we had tumbling rats in the basement and we practiced on the trapeze you made for us. And, and, that, and then in the springtime, we had a bush that it grew. And when it bloomed, it, had, it was covered with three cent suckers. Those little suckers with the little loop were all over our bloom candy tree. Happened every year. We know that all of this wasn't easy. They taught us to love God. They took us to church every Sunday. They taught us to give thanks at mealtime and pray for others and before bed at night. We never missed Sunday school or Bible school. We were active in Grace Lutheran Church and we learned to serve the Lord there. We made sure we wore our underwear to church, especially Bible school. And not all of us always did. That one, who's not here today, she, did, she was doing uh, twirls on the, uh, on the banisters without any underwear on. <laughs> she's not here today, so she can't. She's embarrassed even where she is. We set an example for us on which she based our lives, and we became models for our own children and our own grandchildren. We know that we know all this wasn't easy on the farm. Your work was hard. You slept so soundly that you needed a fire bell mounted on your headboard, as well as an alarm clock, and that to wake you up. And even that didn't wake them up. So then they had to turn on the loud vacuum cleaner in the same room. So there was a fire bell going off on the alarm clock, and the vacuum cleaner came on automatically <laughs> to wake them up because they were so darn tired. They couldn't, they could not wake up at five o'clock to milk the cows. So sometimes they still didn't wake up, and one of us kids would have to go down and tickle their feet until they woke up. But anyway, um, but anyway, they, they had a long day of work on the farm. And then um, when they tried to watch their, their favorite TV shows, As the World Turns and Gunsmoke, they would soon be sound asleep. Mom always said when her eyes bent, her eyes, when her knees bent, her eyes went shut. <laughs> so anyway, this was a tribute that I wrote on their 50th anniversary, which was in 1994. And I, at the bottom, I wrote, train up a child in the way they should go, and when he is old, he will not depart from it. That's Proverbs 22, 6. And that certainly is true. My parents did a really wonderful job, and it's signed by Sharon, Joanne, Ruth, Doug, and Steve. And that, that's my favorite. <coughs> Thursday.
times over one. And I didn't think I could do it because I sat down and started writing and how do you write almost 48 years of memories in 15 minutes? You can't. So I'll just start with my sweet grandma. Our grandma, one of the most loving, caring, and amazing women who I have ever had in my life. She saw us all so many wonderful things and was always there for us no matter what struggle life brought us. She never judged. She loved us with her whole heart. She and Grandpa always grew the most beautiful flowers I have ever seen. I, on the other hand, cannot <laughs> grow big. <laughs> she made sure we were all fed and as kids made sure we all had the most popular items from her trips to Texas and Grandma. She always had gum in her purse and had a lifetime supply of candy to share. If you didn't want any, you best take some. You'll wither away. <laughs> That's what she'd say. Many great memories I, along with all of you, have of her. Grandma, you definitely filled your role here as the Grandma to the fullest. I couldn't have asked for anyone better promise to follow in your footsteps and be sure my children and grandchildren to be of the same love that you have given me. Rest high in the most heavenly sweet Jesus and all of our other loved ones we have lost. I know each and every one of them have welcomed you with open arms. I love you. And now we go just as I am with our own feet.
Our first scripture reading is the 23rd Psalm. The Lord is my shepherd, I shall not want. He makes me lie down in green pastures. He leads me beside still waters. He restores my soul. He leads me in my paths for his name's sake. Even though I walk in the valley of the shadow of death, I fear no evil, for you are with me. Your rod and your staff, they comfort me. You prepare a table before me in the presence of my enemies. You anoint my head with oil, my cup overflows. Surely goodness and mercy shall follow me all the days of my life. I shall dwell in the house of the Lord forever. Our second reading comes from Proverbs chapter 31, beginning with the 10th verse. A capable wife, who can find? She is far more precious than jewels. The heart of her husband trusts in her, and he will have no lack of gain. She does him good and not harm all the days of her life. She seeks wool and flax and works with willing hands. She's like the ships of the merchant. She brings her food from far away. She rises while it is still night and provides food for her household and tasks for her servant girls. She considers a field and buys it. With the fruit of her hands, she plants a vineyard. She girds herself with strength and makes her arms strong. She perceives that her merchandise is profitable. Her lamp does not go out at night. She puts her hand to the distaff, and her hands hold the spindle. She opens her hands to the poor and reaches out her hands to the needy. She is not afraid for her household when it snows, for all her household are clothed in crimson. She makes herself coverings. Her clothing is fine linen and purple. Her husband is known in the city gates, taking his seat among the elders of the land. She makes linen garments and sells them. She supplies the merchant with sashes. Strength and dignity are her clothing, and she laughs at the time to come. She opens her mouth with wisdom, and, teaching, and the teaching of kindness is on her tongue. She looks well to the ways of her household and does not eat bread of idleness. Her children rise up and call her happy, her husband too, and he praises her. Many women have done excellently, but you surpass them all. Charm is deceitful and beauty is vain, but a woman who fears the Lord is to be praised. Give her a share of the fruit of her hands, and let her works praise her in the city gates. This is the word of the Lord. I invite you to please stand for the reading of the gospel. Our gospel comes from the third chapter of John, beginning with the first verse. Now there was a Pharisee named Nicodemus, a leader of the Jews. He came to Jesus by night and said to him, Rabbi, we know that you are a teacher who has come from God, for no one can do these signs that you do apart from the presence of God. Jesus answered him, Very truly I tell you, no one can see the kingdom of God without being born from above. Nicodemus said to him, How can anyone be born after having grown old? Can one enter a second time into the mother's womb and be born? And Jesus answered, Very truly I tell you, no one can enter the kingdom of God without being born of water and spirit. What is born of the flesh is flesh. What is born of the spirit is spirit. Do not be astonished that I say to you, you must be born from above. The wind blows where it chooses, and you hear the sound of it, but you do not know where it comes from or where it goes. So it is with everyone who is born of the Spirit. Nicodemus said to him, How can these things be? And Jesus answered him, Are you a teacher of Israel, and yet you do not understand these things? Very truly I tell you, we speak of what we know, and we testify to what we have seen, yet you do not receive our testimony. If I told you about earthly things, and you do not believe, how can you believe if I tell you about heavenly things? No one has ascended into heaven except the one who descended from heaven, the Son of Man. And just as Moses lifted up the serpent in the wilderness, so must the Son of Man be lifted up, that whoever believes in him may have eternal life. For God so loved the world, that he gave his only Son, that everyone who believes in him may not perish, but may have eternal life. Indeed, God did not send the Son into the world to condemn the world, but in order that the world might be saved. Through him. This is the gospel of our Lord. You may be seated. Grace and peace to you from God our Father and our Lord and Savior Jesus the risen Christ. Amen. One of the definitions 
of the word faithful is steady in allegiance or affection, loyal and constant. Today we give thanks for and remember a woman who was the living and breathing embodiment of these words, Doris Erdahl. Doris was incredibly faithful to her family, her community, and her Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. She was a constant source of love to the people in her life, and she, you knew that she was always there for you. It, of course, starts with her family, whom she was so devoted to, most especially to her husband of almost 70 years, Phil. They had a true partnership, whether it be on the farm, in raising the kids, in impacting the community, and being part of the churches they belonged to in their many years together. There was such a deep and abiding love between them that though Phil has been gone for six and a half years now, he was often in Doris's thoughts. Even in the last days of her life, she spoke about Phil and how much she wanted to be with him. I have no doubt they had a joyous reunion in God's glory. Doris was a loving, caring, and faithful mother to her kids. She kept good track of them and spent many hours worrying about them. She was a teacher to them, not only teaching them the skills they needed in life, but also the importance of faith, family, and hard work. She was a constant presence of love in their life and taught them, as you heard uh, Ruth say, that on Christmas, Santa would not come, and they could not have their gifts until a Christmas program was performed and the lunar fist was finished. She gave the kids the gift and love of music. And for a while, as Ruth said, she took the girls all around to sing and give shows. The love she had for them was extended, of course, to her grandchildren <laughs> and her great-grandchildren, all very important to her in her life. After when I would visit her, she would talk a lot about the grandchildren and the great-grandchildren and what they were doing. The impact of her love and her faithfulness to her family will extend for generations and generations and generations to come. Doris worked hard in her life, not only in the home, but also in her various jobs, most especially the many years that she sold Lutheran Digest. I remember when Lutheran Digest closed and she was so sad when we no longer received them anymore. She helped out others, neighbors and strangers alike, using her skills to the best of her ability to lift others up, whether it's baking some cookie, cookies, sewing something, doing whatever she could to help neighbor and friend alike. Her care for the community inspired her and Phil to create the 4-H group in Connorsville, which still goes strong today. One of the ways that Doris helped others in her later years was through her love of technology. She was a whiz with her cell phone, and when this pandemic started, she got the household at Gladhaven hooked up to Facebook so they could watch church services. <laughs> if that's not an um, example of faithfulness in all areas, I don't know what there is. She was a loyal and loving friend. And she loved to visit with people. Even in her late years, getting in the wheelchair van so she could visit friends and family alike, knowing all the back roads and all the ways to go and where everyone lived and everyone who used to live who used to be there. Most especially, Doris was a faithful disciple of Jesus Christ, her great shepherd, who guided her all her life. Her faith was strong, and she lived that faith every day, not only in the way that she loved others and gave herself to others, but also the way she used her time and talents to further the kingdom of God. She was a longtime member of the church choir, and often saved the events here in Trinity with Dolores Frazina. She was a faithful member here at Trinity of the Esco Circle and the Women's Group, and was often at Bible study studying the Word. She rarely ever missed a service. And when she went to Glenhaven, she never missed a service there, always sitting in the same spot, directly to my left when I was leading, and going to other church services as well. And she always, of course, sang along, and rarely needed to the book for the hymns that we sang, because she had most of them memorized. As it says in our reading from Proverbs, a woman who fears the Lord is to be praised. Today we praise God for Doris, for this faithful and loving child of God. 
But we also praise God for the fulfillment of God's promises in Jesus Christ towards this wonderful baptized child of God. Jesus was faithful to Doris and kept her strong in faith, walking with her even in the midst of the shadow of death. God loved her so much that Jesus died on the cross and rose from the grave for her to bring her to eternal life, to that place prepared for her in heaven. Though our hearts are heavy with grief, they also fill with thankfulness, thankful for this faithful and loving child of God, thankful for the grace and mercy of Jesus Christ, and thankful that one day, through that work of Jesus, we will see Doris again in glory, to have that great reunion again. Until that time, we walk by faith as Doris did, and we are reminded that God's promises which were showered upon her are showered upon us as well. And so, for the life of Doris Hurdle, and for the grace and mercy of Jesus Christ, we can say, thanks be to God. Amen. At this time, we'll hear Beyond the Sunset.
Help us in the midst of things we cannot understand to believe and trust in the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, and the resurrection to life everlasting. Lord, in your mercy, hear our Amen. prayer. God of all grace, we give you thanks because by his death our Savior Jesus Christ destroyed the power of death, and by his resurrection he opened the kingdom of heaven to all believers. Make us certain that because he lives, we shall live also, and that neither death nor life, nor things present nor things to come, will be able to separate us from your love in Christ Jesus our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Amen. Lord, remember us in your kingdom and teach us to pray. Our Amen. Father, who art in heaven, heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy, thy kingdom, kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. Let us commend Doris to the mercy of God, our Maker and Redeemer. Into your hands, O merciful Savior, we commend your servant Doris. Acknowledge, we humbly beseech you, a sheep of your own fold, a lamb of your own flock, a sinner of your own redeeming. Receive her into the arms of your mercy, to the blessed rest of everlasting peace, and into the glorious company of the saints in light. Amen. And now we seek God's blessing. May the Lord bless you and keep you. May the Lord's face shine upon you and be gracious to you. May the Lord look upon you with favor and give you peace in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. We conclude with In the Garden. We invite you to be seated. Thank you.